Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Everyday Rants podcast. This is number 15, podcast number 15 already. And, oh man, it's Monday. It is February 22nd, 2016. And Lauren's vacation was finally over. So she headed over to school today. Ashley's in daycare. My wife's at work. I'm at home trying to get some work done, get some uh, some of my hobby stuff done for Everyday Geek, doing this podcast, just really just enjoying the peace and quiet. It's been a rough, the last two weeks have been intense and rough. I mean, two weeks ago I had Ashley home with me for uh, seven days. One day she went to, to daycare. We thought she was better, but she wasn't. But she was home with me. Uh, she had like a fever, I guess like a virus or something. Uh, they had to put her on antibiotics and everything. But she was home for me for a whole week. That led up into the weekend of Lauren starting her winter break, which was this past week. And, you know, I've mentioned before, you know, I work from home. So, you know, once the kids once the kids are home with me, I have no choice. I, I, I can't get any work done. Um, I try, but it, it's not that easy. And if anybody works from home and has kids and tried it, They'll understand that it's not the easiest thing in the world. But everybody is knock on wood. You hear me knocking on the wood? Hopefully they are good now. They won't get sick again, hopefully, uh, for the remainder of the year, which would be fantastic. And I'm just trying. I'm two weeks behind on everything. I'm two weeks behind in my work. Um... I am two weeks behind in my um, Everyday Geek video edited and everything. I am two weeks behind in everything. So now this week is just a mad dash to try to catch up with as much as I can. And that includes these podcasts and getting these uh, out to you. Uh, some things that will be coming up in the podcasts uh, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, if you're a sports fan, there's going to be uh, a lot of baseball talk coming up soon. I want to, before the season starts, I want to break down... Uh, division, you know, division by division. I want to go through the whole National League and the whole American League, give you my opinions and my takes on how I see the divisions um, playing out. I'm also going to hope to try to get some guests on for that. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. And I also, after I go through the division by division, I also want to then give you my uh, playoff picks, uh, my predictions. Uh, wild cards who will make it to the uh, championship series games and who will possibly be in the World Series. So that'll be coming up. Uh, I also will, will be talking about hockey and basketball now that those are going to probably in the next like month or so start winding down and getting ready for the playoffs. So we'll talk that as well. Um, if none of you know, i um, from New York. I'm on Long Island, so I am a huge Yankees fan. Uh, I'm a New York Giants fan for football, I'm a New York Islander fan for hockey, and I am a New York Knicks fan for basketball. So those are my teams, and I don't really show any type of favoritism or anything like that. So that'll be coming up. Uh, so basically today what I want to talk about is, um, and and I'm going to be taping this also for my YouTube channel, I just put the camera on. Hey guys, how you doing? How's everybody go going on? How's everybody doing? Uh, I'm taping this also for the Everyday Geek YouTube channel. It's going to be my WWE Fastlane uh, review. I guess, little talk here. Um, I watched the, the WWE Fastlane last night on the WWE Network for only $9.99 a month. Uh, but you can go and get it for free because it seems like they give it to free to everybody else. Uh... But anyway, I want to talk about that pay-per-view, um, and I'm going to be honest, I always am, I'm going to be frank with you guys, uh, it was one big heaping pile of dog shit, I thought the pay-per-view was absolutely horrendous, I, uh, from the lazy booking to the impromptu horrible matches for a pay-per-view leading up to Wrestlemania, uh, for the fact that it seems like they were like a half hour um, out of sync, like, it felt like they were, like, short, like, 30 to 45 minutes, and they didn't know what to do, so they had this 
impromptu match that I'm going to go into, and I'm going to give you my takes on stuff, and again, like I said, who am I, but I, I, I'm a huge WWE fan since 1992, I was 12 years old, WrestleMania 8 was the first pay-per-view I ever watched, when I saw Shawn Michaels vs. El Matador Tito Santana at WrestleMania 8 in the Hoosier Dome, I fell in love with the sport, um, watched it ever since, did take a 10-year hiatus from 2003 to about 2013 before the WWE Network debuted, and that was just because of kids and work and stuff, I just, and I, I didn't have my little illegal black box anymore, so I wasn't paying all that money for the pay-per-views, so I kind of fell out of it, and then, and, you know, in the late, in the year 2000, all the way through mid-2001, I did train, um, out, uh, in Holbrook, Long Island, to train to be a WWE superstar, or, or, or a professional wrestler, to say I wanted to be a WWE superstar, so, you know, I have, um, you know, some takes and stuff of my point of view as a hardcore fan, as someone that went through the training for about a year and a half, uh, did some backyard shows, did some house shows in front of a crowd, in an actual ring. Uh, so I'm going to give you my feedbacks and stuff. So first off, we're going to start with the kickoff show. It started off with the kickoff show. They're doing all the previews of everything. And then about 7.30, they kick off with the, they have the U.S. title match, a two out of three falls uh, match with Alberto Del Rio. Versus the champion Kalisto. Now, I was wondering, I was like, wow, why are they having this match already? It's it's the kickoff show. Why not hold it for the pay-per-view? But then I'm thinking, okay, maybe they're gonna maybe they're gonna have these matches on the pay-per-view. Maybe they're gonna have them go, you know, 25, 30 minutes each. Um, you know, maybe around that 20, 25 mark was probably most more realistic where they would have went. So I was like, okay, I could get that. I could see that. Kevin Owens, Dolph Ziggler, I could go for 25 minutes of that. AJ Styles, Jericho, definitely 25, 30 minutes of that. The main event, okay, 30 minutes of that. I can do that. So they do the uh, kickoff uh, match. It was, again, Callisto and Alberto Del Rio. Uh, it was a two out of three falls match. The match itself was very good. Uh, both of them worked a lot better, especially a lot better than what they did at the Royal Rumble. Uh, weren't, weren't that many botches. Uh, the match flowed very well. Alberto looked great. Uh, Callisto looked good. But Alberto is just... I mean, I wish he can get over a little bit more with the crowd because he is just a specimen of what a what a professional wrestler should be. He looks and plays the role perfectly. Uh, but the match was good. He takes an early uh, disqualification because uh, he hits Kalisto with the chair. And he does that really just to set up uh, to get the easy second pin, which he does. Uh, and then it leads into the uh, third fall that Kalisto gets, retains the title. Hopefully this puts to bed their feud. Alberto can move on with something else and they can have Kalisto move on with someone else. Maybe someone else a little younger, a little quicker. Maybe I would love to see a Kalisto so, uh, Neville, a little feud, you know, for that title. That, that, they could have some great matches, and I think a match with them leading up to WrestleMania could be fantastic. So they do that. So then the pay-per-view, you know, they're getting in, that starts. Okay, here we go. Pay-per-view starting. I'm all excited. All right. So they start off this, the show with Sasha Banks, her music hits. So they're going to start off with the, the Tag Team Divas match. Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch against Naomi and Tamina. Now, I'm going to repeat what I've been saying for months. I don't understand Tamina. I don't know what her purpose is. I don't think she's that great of a wrestler. I don't get her look. I don't get the whole everything. I understand. I think that's Jimmy Snooker's daughter, I think. Uh, but otherwise, I don't get everything else. That being said, um, the match itself was good. Uh, should it have opened the show? No, I was surprised. I thought they would have opened, especially when they did the Alberto Del Rio match on the kickoff. I thought maybe they should have opened with Owens and Ziggler. I thought that could have been a better opener, uh, just because those two work very well. And Owens, it seems like pay-per-view to pay-per-view to pay-per-view, he's having great matches nonstop. Uh, but they opened up with the tag team match. It was okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't horrible. It was okay. Uh, Banks and Becky get the win. Thankfully, because uh, I don't really know what they're doing with Naomi and Tamina. I don't really see that going anywhere. Uh, hopefully, they can repackage, especially Naomi, and figure out something to do with her. Because uh, she's at least got talent. Uh, Tamina, to me personally, again, I don't get it. I'm not a big fan, so whatever. But Banks and uh, uh, Becky get the win. They looked good. Uh, again, the match was okay. It didn't seem... The crowd seemed to be into it, but it wasn't... It didn't seem like it was that... It, 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 I don't know if it should have opened a show. So we'll just start it at that. I don't know if it should have opened the show, but it was a good match. Not great. Not horrible. Right there in between. Uh, next match up, they go with the Intercontinental title. And it's Kevin Owens defending his title against Dolph Ziggler. Now, I, I saw a lot of stuff on the internet, on Twitter, even on YouTube and stuff. And I know people are getting tired of seeing these two wrestle because they seem to be wrestling all the time. But they do wrestle very well. Ziggler is fantastic at selling. Uh, Ziggler, I don't understand what they're doing with. He had so much great, uh, 
uh, just positive heat behind. I mean, he was so over with the crowd back a couple Survivor Series ago when he defeated the Authority and everything. They could have pushed him to the moon. I thought that's what they were going to do, but they didn't. They've kind of kept him down. I, I don't know if he pissed somebody off or if they just don't like him. or I, I don't know what they're doing with Dolph. But uh, he's a great worker. Kevin Owens is fantastic. I'm so glad they're pushing him to the moon. Uh, he deserves it. Great on the mic. A great wrestler for a big dude. Uh, they put on a... That match was fantastic. That was a clinic of a great match. Um, the bumps were crazy. The the moves were the The crowd got into it. You got a few... I think it was like one or two. Maybe more. But I, I'm pretty sure I picked up one or two. Uh, this is awesome chance. Which is always a good sign if you're in a match. And it seems like Owens is getting that almost every pay-per-view match he's in. He seems to be getting... This is awesome chance. And... and, and being one of the top matches on pay-per-views, which is great. So I hope they keep that Kevin Owens push. It's awesome. But that was a great match. Kevin Owens won. He retains the title, which is good. Because it allows. I hope they allow Dolph Ziggler to go off to do something else. Maybe challenge for the world title or... Uh, I, I just don't know what they're going to do with him. I don't know what they're doing with Dolph Ziggler, but I would like to see Kevin Owens go into a nice, good feud. I'm hoping with AJ Styles for the Intercontinental title. It seems like that's what they kind of are starting because last night... Uh, after the, I think it was after the pay-per-view or maybe right before the ending, uh, Kevin Owens went on his Twitter account and uh, tweeted um, about how he could, he would beat AJ Styles in a match for the Intercon title as fast as he threw him out of the Royal Rumble, which makes you think, is there some type of, a, are they trying to start something there between Owens and Styles maybe leading into WrestleMania, maybe make it a ladder match or, or some type of like stipulation match, steel cage, I think would be awesome. Because uh, AJ, we're going to get him later, looked good and looks like he's going to work in the WWE. So, Owens won. Great job. He kept the title. I'm two for two. I was thrilled. Okay. Getting to the next match. It's the Wyatts, uh, the Wyatt family. It's Eric Rowan, Luke Harper, and Braun Strowman against Ryback, Big Show, and Kane. Now, in my predictions last week, um, I picked the Wyatts, as did Lauren. Um, I didn't see why they would let the other team win because the Wyatts need the win. They don't seem to be winning anymore. Um, uh, Bray Wyatt should be in the title picture. I don't know what they're... I really don't know what the WWE is doing. After this show, if you watch it, the writing is horrible. It's predictable as fuck. And, I mean, they just can't get their heads out of their ass. Well, they just don't want to. They don't care what the fans want. They are so out of touch of what the WWE Universe and fans want. It is absolutely mind-boggling how th this is going on. And that's because there's no competition. You know, back in the days, in the 90s, when WCW was there, you know, beating them. I mean, WWF went balls to the wall and won that war because they, they let Steve Austin. They let The Rock. They let Mankind. They let, the under they let these guys just go out and do it. Go out there, say what you want, do what you want, just get the ratings. And that was some of the best wrestling ever. What they're doing now, it's like they're spitting in the face of the fans because it's predictability after predictability. They don't change anything up. Now, I know they have weeks before WrestleMania to make changes to the stuff that's going to be coming up in my rant here. But uh, it, it's just mind-boggling how, how a company just doesn't care what their fans want. They just keep force-feeding us what they want, and they don't understand that that's why negative things are coming back towards them. So, the the Wyatt's match, it was okay. It wasn't great. Like I said, the only person I like in that whole match, working-wise, is Luke Harper. I think he's a great talent. Strowman's kind of what he is, a big doof. Uh, Eric Rowan, I don't know, whatever. Show and Kane, I think, are way over prime. They're just jobbers now. They need to just retire, move on. I don't know. And Ryback, I just find he's a cheap imitation... A cheap imitation of Goldberg. And now with his new look, with his new type, he looks like an imitation of Goldberg. Except he doesn't have Goldberg's charisma. You know, Goldberg, even though he was very limited in his, his talent, he had charisma with the crowd. When he came out there, you knew shit was going down. Ryback is just like, okay, this big roided head dude. You're like, whatever. So, that match goes on. It was okay, you know. But the ending was just horrible. They had Ryback... He got the pin on, crap, I don't remember who he pinned. It might have been Harper. I don't remember who he pinned, but he pinned and beat the Wyatts. Now, again, why are the Wyatts losing again? The Wyatts never get a win anymore in the WWE. They are burying them more and more, but then continue to give them time to do promos and, 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 and go after some of the top talent. Let them win. Let Bray and the Wyatts get a win. There was no reason for the Wyatts to lose this match. I want somebody out there to tell me why the Wyatts needed to lose that match. Show and Kane are done. They're not going for any pushes. They're not going for any title reigns. They're not going for any long feuds with anybody. They're done. 
they're probably a couple of months away from announcing their retirement or just being official jobbers once in a while on TV like Mark Henry. And Ryback is nothing. He's so bad that they took the title off him quicker than you've ever seen. Because they wanted the t- title off him because he's not a great wrestler. He's not that over with the fans. I really do feel like the f- Feed Me More chants, I feel like they're piped in that audience. Because half the time you hear the chant, nobody's standing in the audience that you see. No one's chanting. Where's that Feed Me More chant coming from? But anyway. So I don't understand why they gave the match to Ryback and them. Uh, the Whites lose again. I don't get it. But I was like, okay, whatever. They're going to come out later because, you know, they got to continue the storyline with Brock Lesnar from the Royal Rumble. So they're going to somehow screw Brock Lesnar in the title picture. So I was like, okay, we'll see them later. Let's move on with the show. We'll get to that later. So then next up in the show, we go with the, uh, they go with the Divas Championship. Okay. Charlotte versus Brie Bella. And again, this is one where the WWE kind of force-fed Brie Bella into this title picture because of everything going on with her sister Nikki and her husband Daniel Bryan. So, okay, you get it. You feel the emotions. You're like, okay, you get into it. I mean, I knew that Brie wasn't going to win. I know Lauren wanted Brie. I knew they were going to keep the title on Charlotte. They weren't going to give it to Brie. I think they're really setting up a Charlotte, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch type of three-way, some type of three-way match at WrestleMania. So, the match was good. It was a pretty good match. They went. They let it go for a little bit. It went for a, probably about 10 minutes or so, which is a little shocking in the women's division when they let matches go that long. Uh, but here are my a few complaints. One, Charlotte doesn't seem to sell moves that much for her opponents. Uh, she doesn't really put them over that well and make them look like real competitors. I don't know if that's just something she does or if that's just something she's trying to do. I don't really know. I, I, I found that a little odd. How she wasn't really selling a lot of moves. And then the whole ending part uh, was a little odd, the way it ended, uh, where Brie basically had uh, Charlotte beat. She had her in the submission move. Charlotte couldn't get out of it. And then Rick is yelling some crap to her about her husband. Like, what about Daniel or something like that? And she got all distracted, and they had it where she Charlotte kicked out because Brie was distracted. It was just a very, really odd ending. They had um, uh, Charlotte got her into her figure eight whatever um, submission. Brie submitted uh, very reluctantly too. If you watch it, it looked like she was tapping that mat like very reluctantly, like she didn't want to tap, or she might have been pissed off about something. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just reading a little too much into that. But they have Charlotte retain the title, and it is what it is. I mean. It was an okay match. It wasn't great. It wasn't horrible, but it was what it was. Okay. Then we get into the AJ Styles and the Chris Jericho match. Now, when we did the review uh, and we put it out, we taped it Thursday afternoon. So SmackDown, they didn't announce yet that that wasn't going to be an official match for the pay-per-view. If it was, I would have went AJ Styles because I am a huge AJ Styles fan. And I'm hoping they start a push with him. So they open up that match. They had a really good match. Were there a few botched moves? Yes. It was a good match. They gave it time, which was good to see. Because, um, you know, AJ Styles needs time um, in his matches to really tell the story. I don't know if he'll really suit well with, like, those four or five minute matches. He needs more of that, like, 15 to 20 to 25 minute uh, match. But it it worked well. There were a few botches, of course. But otherwise, it was really good. Um, He finally hit the Styles Clash, which was awesome. But they let Jericho kick out of it, which was a little weird. Because I was like, okay, they built it up for, like, a month now that he couldn't hit that move. You know, every time he went for it. It got, so you, you would have thought, like, if, once he hit it, that would have been it. He would have won, but they had Jericho kick out of it, which I was like, okay, I guess. Like, why was it such a big deal to hold off then for a whole month to let him hit it? Whatever. But then he actually ended up getting uh, Jericho to submit, which might have been a stronger finish maybe because he, you know, Jericho doesn't submit too much. And they had him submit. Uh, AJ Styles won. Hopefully he's going on. Uh, to bigger and better things, um, and let Jericho move on or do something else with somebody else. But that was cool to see. I'm ho- like I said, I hope they're doing a, neat, a Kevin Owens, AJ Styles in a continental program for WrestleMania. I think that would be fantastic, and I think those two could put on some of the best matches we'll probably see in WWE television for a while. So that match. Now, after that match, I look at the time, and I'm like, wow, it's like, I think it was like 10 to 10, maybe a quarter to 10. And I'm like, wow, they still got like an hour and 15 minutes or so, and all they got left is this cutting edge peep show that they were doing with the New Day and the main event. So I was like, wow, they must be giving the main event like a long time. I'm like, wow, they're going to give them like 45 minutes or so. Like, this is going to be awesome. So we get into the... Now, the show at this point was okay. 
it wasn't fantastic. You weren't like, oh my god, every match so far. So far, the greatest match at this point was Owens and Ziggler. Fantastic. AJ Styles, Jericho, really good. And then everything else kind of fell like, okay. So I'm like, okay, this, ma- this pay-per-view has been okay. We'll see what happens next. I love Edge and Christian. I love them in the uh, when I watched the WWF back in the day. Huge fan of them. Used to even have the yellow shirt that had their Edge and Christian in the white. Love them. They come out to do their cut and edge uh, peep show where they're going to have the New Day on there. Now, I was assuming that they were going to have this because both sides, they're, they're funny guys and they can really pull it off. And in my head, I was like, okay, I have a feeling maybe they're going to set up some type of impromptu type of tag title match. Now, I didn't think with Edge and Christian because, you know, Edge can't wrestle. Uh, Christian never officially retired, I don't think. But Edge can't wrestle. So I was thinking maybe someone else was going to come out. Uh, maybe someone make a debut. I was hoping maybe the Hardy Boys, but I think, like, Je- I think Matt or Jeff just signed a new contract with TNA. So I was like, maybe, you never know. Maybe things fall out or whatever. Then I was like, oh, oh maybe the Dudleys will come out. But the Dudleys just... I thought maybe the Dudleys would come out because New Day is kind of turning face. So I thought that could kind of work. Um, but I'm like, okay, this is going to lead somewhere. It's not just going to be them rambling and then that's it. Here we go. So they come out. They have their bar back and forth. It's kind of funny. You know, they're kind of hitting each other with zingers, whatever. And then this is the moment I'm like, okay, here we go. We're going to either get uh, the Dudley boys are going to come out or we're going to get some tag team from that we didn't expect or some NXT guys that can come out like um, Cass and Enzo. I'm like, um, you know, I'm like, this is it. Some NXT team is going to come out, or it's going to be some other team, some other federal. Maybe, maybe the Hardy Boys. I was like, had my fingers crossed, like that'd be awesome. Like maybe the Dudleys are going to come out because they just turned heel, and this would be great. They could get them, put them to a table. They might be booed. Uh, we'll see. So the New Day goes into this stance where they start rattling off teams, like who's going to beat us or something like that. And they go the Ascension. They make fun of them, of course, bury them some more because uh, they never had a shot. Then they mentioned uh, they mentioned some other teams. I can't remember who. Uh, and then they, they then they mention out of nowhere the league of the league of nations and I, at that moment I was like that's weird like I didn't really consider them a tag team why are they mentioning them and then the league of nations came out and this is where the show just <laughs> tanked just boom the bomb went off the rails fell apart the show just plummeted to an absolute big pile of dog shit. And I'm so glad I don't pay fifty dollars to watch this on pay-per-view that I have the the nine ninety nine because you know what? Everything else that they do on the channel and all the other history I have to go back and look at pay-per-view wise is worth the nine ninety nine, not the shit show that they've been having. But I mean the show just tanked at this moment. League of Nations come out and you know, the New Day kind of backs off them like they're scared, they back out of the ring, and then the League of Nations is going out at, at you know, talking smack to Edge and Christian, they're going back and forth, then Edge and Christian leave. And then it, it leads into, like, now Edge and Christian and the New Day are in the middle of the aisle taunting the League of Nations. I, And that was it. Then they just cut to, like, a, a promo. I don't understand what it advanced. I don't understand, like, I understand New Day was kind of turning face, but, like, are we supposed to, like, is New Day fa- a face team now? And a League of Nations now apparently, like, a tag team? Because the other thing is, too, Wade Barrett just gave his... He's not signing a new contract. So Wade Barrett's gone, I think, in, like, May or June. So, you know, he's out of there. So it's only going to be Alberto Del Rio, Sheamus, and Rusev. I I was very confused. I didn't know why they did that. Um, I don't know why they couldn't just bring up an NXT, an N- NXT team to maybe challenge him for an impromptu title match. But they didn't do that. And then what, what, what got me more confused is what happened next. And this was confusing, too, because I'll tie it back to the whole Edge and Christian thing. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's still like an hour or like 50 minutes left of the pay-per-view. The social outcasts come out, which were not scheduled to be on the show. They come out and end up, it's going to be an impromptu match. It's going to be Curtis Axel versus R-Truth. And I'm sitting there going, first off, this is a pay-per-view leading up to WrestleMania, the biggest show of your, your, your company. This is your Super Bowl. And you're having before the main event... Curtis Axel versus R Truth. It it was mind boggling the the writing and what it's. This is where I said it seemed like they were somehow they calculated something wrong, and they missed like a thirty minute block and they didn't know what to do with it. Now here's my point: Why didn't they just keep the U.S. title match on the pay per view? And if they wanted to take that off, why? 
since they had gold dust come out and kind of like cost our truth the match and they're trying to set up that whole like our truth gold dust type of tag team you know gold and truth whatever why when new day was in the ring with edge and christian and they were riding off tag teams why didn't they have gold and truth come out our truth and gold Dust come into that ring those two are funny also they could have had seven of the funniest people in the ring just going at it and then maybe set up an impromptu tag team title match have new day win but you got your tag team you got our truth the golden truth with our truth and gold dust as a team now and it could be a funny gimmick a ha ha you know they do some crazy stuff but you would have at least had another title match new day would have won they would have still been over uh it would have set up another tag team in in the wwe because they don't have a lot of tag teams but instead, we get Curtis Axel versus R Truth, which didn't make sense to me. The show just came to a complete halt. I started to feel like I was watching a Monday Night Raw uh, or like a SmackDown or or Superstars. Um, it didn't feel like a pay per view at that moment. Um, it was just it was just stupid and poorly planned and and just odd. And I don't understand it. And uh, it seems like someone made a mistake there in the booking of time for the pay per view. So anyway. Curtis Axel won, whatever, who cares. Then they get it to the main event. Here we go. Brock Lesnar, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns. Everybody is assuming Roman Reigns is going to win, but you're thinking maybe the WWE won't be that predictable and they'll give it to Brock or have, you know, have the Wyatts come out and continue their feud with Brock spilling over from the Royal Rumble um, and have maybe Dean Ambrose surprise win it. And, you know, you don't think they're going to be predictable and go with Reigns again. You're hoping not. So we go to the match, Brock Lesnar brings everybody to Suplex City, all over the place, even uh, he had a double one where he got like Reigns and Dean Ambrose up for a double like Suplex, which was an awesome spot. Uh, Reigns and Dean Ambrose got their share on Brock Lesnar too, they powerbombed them through both tables, the Spanish announce table and the regular table. Um, so it was a lot of good back and forth, the match was pretty high paced and everything. Uh, Roman again in the beginning kind of disappeared for a few minutes, which is getting a little tiresome. Because again, you know they want to build him up as his underdog that can't get the win, but seems to be winning all the time. You know, back in the '90s when they did this with Steve Austin, Steve Austin never backed down from a fight though. Steve Austin was right there in your face, just hammering at home. Um, but you know, whatever they're trying to force Reigns, and it's not working. But they must assume it is. I don't know. Very out of touch. Very out of touch company. So they're going through the match, uh, and we get to a point where uh, Ambrose comes in with a chair. He just is leveling Lesnar in the back. I mean, those shots look like they hurt. Nailed Lesnar a bunch of times, then nailed Reigns on the floor. And then I, I got to tell you, there's 20 minutes about left of the pay-per-view. It's like 1040. He's hitting Reigns, with, and, and Reigns like, kind of no-sold the shots. If I remember correctly, because it happened so quickly... I think he hit Ambrose with a spear and they got the pin and won the match. It seemed like it came out of nowhere. They still had like 15 or more minutes to do stuff. Um, he no-sold the chair shots, but meanwhile it took out big, huge Brock Lesnar. I mean, is anybody there thinking, or any of anybody in the WWE thinking, does anybody there know what they're doing? Because it seems like they're all out of touch and they're not... They don't know what the hell they're doing. This had to be probably the worst pay-per-view. And the best part about it is that they will continue to force Roman Reigns down our throat. But, but, as soon as he won, they took the cameras off the audience. They would not put the, the uh, camera on the audience because they were booing. They had thumbs down. The audience was pissed off because they either wanted Brock or they wanted Dean. We are tired of Roman Reigns. But then it gets worse. Because then Triple H comes running down, you know, coming walking down the aisle with the title with his fucking schnoz and, you know, all up in the air like he knows what everybody wants. He comes out, and all they do, and there's still like over 10 minutes left of them to do something, probably even more time. And they just show them zoomed in because they couldn't zoom out because it would show too much of the audience. They had them like kind of zoomed in where all you saw was like here, up. And they just face to face. And Triple H is holding the title up. Going into WrestleMania, why didn't Triple H come out and beat the shit out of him? Or vice versa. Or something. But they couldn't show the audience because, you know, the audience was going nuts. And it sounded like they even dumbed the, the uh, di like, uh, lowered the sound a little bit in the production studio. Because like, you didn't hear as loud of booze. I mean, it was an utter shock that... that 
the whole pay-per-view was a piece of shit. Besides Owens and Ziggler, and then right after that, Styles and Jericho, don't watch it. The rest of it was garbage. The rest of it was predictable garbage. Horrible. Horrible pay-per-view. I don't know what the WWE is doing. They're setting up for their biggest event of the year, WrestleMania. The, the, the pay-per-view before it was horrible. Just odd segments. Weird finishes to matches where it seemed like it came out of nowhere. It seemed like a 45-minute block that they had no clue what to do with. Even the last end of the match, they had 15 to 20 minutes to spare, and it ended suddenly. It just, out of nowhere, it just ended. Um, horrible. Horrible pay-per-view. Um, uh, for, for it, it was just bad. It was just horrible. And I would love to know what anybody else thought. Uh, you know, let me know. Um, you know, if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, you can leave comments on there. I would love to know what you thought. If you're watching this over on our Everyday Geek YouTube channel, you can leave comments there. I will get back to you. But as for that, that was my wrap-up on the WWE Fastlane pay-per-view uh, leading up to WrestleMania. It was a horrible pay-per-view. I did not like it. After the show, I went into my bedroom. My wife was watching TV. She said, how was your pay-per-view? I said, it sucked. She went, really? I go, it was horrible. I was so pissed off that I missed The Walking Dead. I have it on DVR. I'm going to watch it tonight. But I'd rather have watched The Walking Dead. That pay-per-view was absolute dog shit. Dog shit. Horrible. But anyway, uh, for I'm going to I'm gonna stop the tape now for the taping for the uh, channel. So thanks for watching. And I'm going to continue going on with the podcast here for you guys. So that was my take on the pay-per-view. I, I really just did not like it. Did not like it. So predictable. So horrible. The it, Everything was just wrong. Everything. Oh, man. I, I can't believe it was so wrong. But that was my take on the WWE Fastlane. Um, Moving on, I think I'm actually going to end it here. It's, it's a long uh, a long rant here of me talking about the pay-per-view. Uh, but remember, you can uh, download us and listen to it uh, free on SoundCloud. It's Everyday Rants. And if you want to go over to our YouTube channel and check out the stuff we're doing there, it's Everyday Geek. Uh, you can find us over there. And we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well at Everyday Geek TV. Thanks again, guys, for listening. I love you guys very much. Appreciate it and have a good one. Adios.